intuition. So I thought maybe something fun to be talking about would be psychics. Can we, uh, do we believe in psychics? I have been to a number of psychics throughout my life. I have not done it in a long time. The last time I got my cards read, I was in New Orleans about five years ago. And that was just somebody, you know, on the street. It was fun. Um, And I I actually do put a little bit, she told me to focus on my writing. She told me to focus on something that was just by me rather than working for other people. And, you know, I didn't listen. But now I'm kind of doing that. So maybe she did see a little something. I don't don't give the little street people uh, a lot of credit. Um, But there's been some big ones, uh, you know, that you have to wait for appointments for. I had an appointment with somebody who was very famous in Philadelphia. His name was Mr. D. And there was like a months and months long waiting list to see this guy. I'm pretty sure he cannot still be around at this point because he was really old when I went to see him. I don't remember much from the predictions that he made in my life. But here's what he did do that kind of blew me out of the water. He kept telling me that my ESP was throwing names off to him. And he was going to write down a list. He wrote down a a female list of names, and a male list of names. And on these two lists was everybody that was in my life. And some of them were strange names. One of my uh, best friends at the time was named Tamara. Tamara was on the list. How many people do you name know named Tamara? I only know one person named Tamara. And her name was on the list. My friend Dina Her name was on the list, spelled exactly the way that she spells it, because we all know there is a number of different ways to spell Dina. My mom's name was on the list. My sister's name was on the list. People that I worked with were on the list. Here's the very interesting thing about the mail list. On the list was my father, my stepfather, my brother's name, the guy that I worked with, my partner at the time. The first name on the list, though, and... (laughs) He's, he wrote down Fresco on the mail list. First name on the list. I had a cat named Frisco. Kind of creepy and eerie, right? Who comes up with Fresco? Fresco. So close. Yeah, that freaked me out. Like I said, I don't really remember anything else because I was so blown away by that. And it was just a cool experience. I don't go into these things going, oh, they're going to tell me what I need to do. That's not what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to, you know, I don't know, not even guide you. They're just, it's for fun, people. You've got to go in for with a grain of salt. You've got to think about it. Like it's just a fun night out with the girls or a fun night out with the hubby. Or like I said, I stopped in the street and I just thought it would be fun. And it was fun. I don't really put any more stock into it. I know a lot of people do. I was told once that I um, have a little psychic ability. I don't know if that's true, but I had my palm read by a friend of my mom's one time, and she said I had a psychic star on my palm. She was the only one to ever point it out. I never had anybody else mention it, but I remember when she saw it, she was kind of freaked out. She's like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, I have never seen one of these before. And I'm like, what, what, what? She's like, you have a psychic star. She, well, no, first she goes, do you, um, I don't forget the way she worded it. Like, do you see things happening a lot or something like that? I said, well, I'm a pretty good guesser. She goes, yeah, I bet you are. Um, I wouldn't go as far to say that I'm psychic, but apparently somebody once saw a psychic star on my palm and said that if I honed my ability, I could probably become a psychic. Not something that I'm really interested in. Not a big deal. Maybe it would be fun to read cards for people, but again, just not not on my list. So I asked you, do you believe in psychics? Has anything ever come true? Diane says, oh my God, yes. I've been to a couple that were spot on, and I believe that we get signs from those that have passed. Jim says, I believe there is a spiritual world. I've felt it, but psychics? Nope. Only God can see the future. Adele says, I totally believe that some people have psychic powers, but nowhere near as many as claim to. Agree. Linda says she's been to two psychics, both a waste of money. Dawn says she's never been to one because they are too expensive. Gail says, I believe in ESP, 
and that some people have heightened perception. I believe that too. Marianne says, I went to one after my son died. She was a friend of a friend that didn't do it for money. She was spot on and knew things that no one knew but me. So I believe that some people have a gift and a lot of them are phony. So it looks like we have a mix of, you know, some people, yes, some people, no. And that's okay. Some people are truly gifted, I believe. That's my opinion. But yeah, like most people are saying, not nearly the amount of people who are claiming to be psychic. Um, And again, it's just, it's not even a guide. Like I keep wanting to just say, use the word, it's a guide. Not really even a guide. It's just kind of interesting. You know, they're saying what's going to happen to you. I went to a psychic when I was young with a bunch of girls that I worked with. And I remember my friend Karen, she had been on and off dating with her uh, boyfriend Dave for some time. They were young. We were all young. We were in our early 20s. And I remember we went to this woman's house and we brought some wine. And she had been in a breakup at this point with her boyfriend Dave. And the psychic told her that she was going to marry Dave. And she's like, "Uh uh-uh, no way. I'm never getting back together with him. I don't care if he goes on the Oprah Winfrey show to propose. No way am I getting back together with him. Married four kids. Do I think it had something to do with psychic? Nah. But I think that, you know, she was right. Anybody could have been right. I don't know. I just think it's kind of cool. So on the same vein, today's blog post is about, again, continuing with behaviors to adopt, intuition. I put up a picture with a quote, if it looks right but feels wrong, it is fear. If it looks wrong but feels right, it's intuition. You need to hone and develop your intuition. It's already there. We just need to start paying attention to it. Did you ever just know something without really knowing it? That is your intuition. It happens over and over again. So tune into it. Pay attention to it. Listen to it. It's almost always right. Now, I've been told by my neighbor, I need to stop talking about my job loss. Put it behind me. Move forward. We're done with that. I am. But I do need to mention this because it's important. There had been some issues going on at work that were being discussed between myself and management. Now, during one of the last meetings I had with my boss, he had made a comment as he, you know, kind of played off as a joke. But it kind of let me think that he thought I was a complainer, which I didn't agree with, but... I didn't want to get back to him for a follow-up on that meeting because he now obviously thinks I'm a complainer, but he wasn't getting back to me. So I discussed with my husband the possibility of going right to the general manager, but I was worried that it would appear that I was going over my boss's head. So I didn't know what to do. After mulling it over the whole weekend, I told my husband that I had just a really bad feeling. So he said, well, go ahead and then contact the general manager. So I did. I sent him an email the next day, which was Monday. He never responded to my email. And I didn't want to be, you know, too up in their face about it. Like, I figured I figured he got my email. Figured he didn't want to talk to me. Turns out he didn't want to talk to me. You know why? Because I lost my job that Friday. So my point is I knew something was wrong. I knew something was coming. I heard my intuition. I listened to my intuition. In this case, it didn't do any good. But I knew something was coming, and I knew I was not going to like it. Did you ever walk into a place and just know you're supposed to be there? That's happened to me with a couple of jobs. Knowing the minute I've walked into certain establishments that I would be working there. I knew the minute I walked into this house, the one that we ultimately purchased, that this was my house. The first time we came to view the house, I could totally see myself walking through that door every day. It already felt like home. That's what I said to the realtor that day when we came to look at it the first time. I just said, feels like home. And guess what? It's home. Same thing happened when I decided to start this blog and podcast. Now, I had already started the blog, but it literally hit me like a bolt of lightning when I was at the gym one morning. I am going to start a podcast, and I'm going to inspire people every day. I hope I am doing that. I am not going to get fired from jobs anymore for things that are not in my control. As the idea hit, 
it started to grow. I got together with a friend of mine who's a podcast consultant. He showed me the way. Got it up and running within three weeks. Then I had an offer of help to design and launch a website. Yes, let's do it. All these things are happening, and I know deep down that this is my calling. This is what I was born to do, and nothing will stop me from getting to my goal. I know I will get there, and this will be my dream come true. I can't wait for you all to come along with me. It is meant to be. You know how I know? I can feel it. My intuition is telling me I'm on the right track. Don't know always where I'm going, but the path is unfolding as I go along. I'm adding more and more as I go along. So listen to your heart. It will not steer you wrong. How about meeting someone for the first time? Do you ever have a weird feeling? I was introduced to a guy once at work that managed a radio station I was going to start doing news reports for. He wasn't particularly good looking. You know, it wasn't like, woo, look at this hottie. Woo, I want to get in his pants. It was not like that at all. I just had this feeling that he was going to be someone important in my life. I ended up dating him for two years. But like I said, not an instant attraction. It was just more like a feeling of connection, almost like something inside of me was saying, pay attention, pay attention. Now, it did take us a while to start dating. We spoke on the phone when I called in to do my reports for about six months before we started dating. Like I said, I just knew when I met him that he would play an important part in my life, and he did. So when it comes to honing your intuition, you need to get quiet and listen to what your heart is telling you. It's not easy, but sometimes, most times, the answer has been there all along, and we just are not quieting our life enough to hear it. So start paying attention to the things that light you up, the places and the people You are leading yourself exactly where you want to go. You just need to pay attention. Your heart has known all along. It is a hump day. It is a great day to stop, take some time to listen to your inner thoughts and feelings. Now, I would like you to go make it your best day yet. Check out my new website, hopefulist.com. Post something on the Hopefulist group page. Let's do this all together. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to The Hopeless, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist. Hopefulist.